This is the F-86, the next generation fighter jet that may soon replace both the f Raptor and the F-35 Lightning II as the undisputed king of the skies. Around the world, every major military power is racing to develop the first true sixth generation stealth fighter. But here's the surprising twist. It might not be the United States Air Force that wins this race. Instead, it could be the United States Navy, an unexpected leader who surprises everyone by delivering the most advanced, capable, and cost-effective 6th gen platform yet. We're talking about a complete reimagining of aerial combat. We now have a preliminary publicly released image of what FAXX might look like. Its design is unlike anything seen before in operational fighter jets. It features a tailless blended wing body or BWB configuration. This means the wings seamlessly merge into the fuselage without any vertical stabilizers or rudders. Just smooth flowing contours optimised to scatter radar waves in every direction. The engine inlets are fully recessed, hidden deep within the airframe, eliminating the risk of resonance signatures that can be picked up by low-frequency radar waves. These inlets aren't just shaped for aerodynamics to engineer to absorb, deflect and neutralise electromagnetic energy before it ever bounces back to enemy sensors. With stealth as the absolute top priority, the FAXX will likely be constructed using the most advanced composite materials available today. But stealth alone won't make the FAXX victorious. To become the new dominant force in aerial warfare, it must also solve the fundamental flaws that plague today's fifth generation fighters. Take, for example, the twin canted vertical tails found on the F-20 and the F-35. These tails help with your control and maneuverability but they also act like giant radar reflectors. Even though they're angled to reduce the radar cross-section, they still stand up clearly on radar screens, especially when viewed from below or above. They're visual giveaways, they're tactical liabilities. And then there are those gaping engine intakes. Yes, they're necessary to feed massive amounts of air to the turbofan engines, but they also create acoustic and thermal resonances that modern low band radar systems like China's new VHF early warning radars can detect from hundreds of kilometers away. Even the most invisible aircraft becomes visible if its engine noise echoes across the electromagnetic spectrum. And let's not forget the cost. Each F-35C model costs the Navy around $17,300,000 per uni. That's just the purchase price. When you factor in maintenance, spare parts, fuel, training, software updates, and life cycle expenses of its expected 66-year lifespan. The total skyrockets to over $1.3 trillion. $1.3 trillion of technology that's already showing signs of obsolescence. The FAXX is designed to fix all of these problems and do it more cheaply by removing the tails, reducing drag, integrating cleaner propulsion, and leveraging modular manufacturing techniques. The Navy estimates the FAXX could be built at significantly lower cost per unit. Not just cheaper to buy, cheaper to operate, cheaper to maintain, cheaper to upgrade, and crucially, it will fly farther, faster, and with greater endurance than any current fighter. Why does this matter? Because the nature of modern warfare has changed dramatically. Radar technology has improved. Yes, but so have armed taxes and area denial weapons. China, in particular, has developed an arsenal that makes approaching its coastlines a deadly gamble. The DF to 1D missile nicknamed the Carrier Killer was terrifying enough. It carries a 600 kilogram warhead and can strike targets up to 2,150 kilometers away. But then came the DF to 6B. This weapon reportedly doubles everything. A payload of 1,800 kilograms, a range of up to 4,000 kilometers. That's enough to threaten American aircraft carriers even before they enter the traditional combat radius of their own fighter jets. And that's not all. There's also the DFCF, a hypersonic glide vehicle launched from the DF-17 missile. It travels at speeds between Mach 5 and Mach 10. That's five to 10 times the speed of sound. It can cover nearly 2,000 kilometers while evading virtually all existing air defense systems. It doesn't fly like a missile. It glides, maneuvers, and changes trajectory unpredictably making the interception nearly impossible. These weapons aren't theoretical. They're positioned along China's to a zones on taxis. Area denial corridors stretching across the South China Sea, the East China Sea, and the Taiwan Strait. Every single one of these regions is a choke point. Every single one is critical to controlling access to the Chinese mainland. And every single one puts US carrier strike groups within lethal range. Now consider this. The F-30 
F5C has a maximum flight range of roughly 1200 nautical miles. Its actual combat radius meaning how far it can fly to a target, engage and return is only half that, 600 nautical miles. That means the strike targets inside Chinese territory. The carrier would need to launch the F-35 from a position already and a threat from the DF-60. In other words, to fight, the carrier must put itself at risk so the FAXX must do something no previous fight has done. It must penetrate deeper, fly farther, stay undetected longer and launch from distances so far away that even the longest range Chinese missiles cannot reach the carrier. But given the rapid advancement of hypersonic technology, even 1,000 miles might not be enough. The FAXX will need to be ready for threats that haven't been deployed yet weapons still in laboratories, still in wind tunnels, still in development. Speed is another non-negotiable. Current fifth generation fighters rely on turbofan engines like the Pratt and Whitney F-135. These engines produce tremendous thrust allowing the F-35 to reach speeds Mach 1.6, roughly 1200 miles per hour even when carrying a full weapons load. But Mach 1.6 isn't fast enough anymore to outrun hypersonic interceptors, evade advanced surface to air missiles and execute high speed strike and retreat missions. The FAXX needs to consistently exceed Mach 2, maybe even approach Mach 2.5. And here's where the real breakthrough lies. The new engine powering the FAXX won't be a standard turbofan. It will be an adaptive cycle engine commonly called an ACE. This revolutionary system can switch between turbofan and turbojet modes mid-flight. At low altitudes or during takeoff, it acts like a turbofan maximizing fuel efficiency and thrust. At high altitudes or during supersonic dashes, it shifts into turbojet mode minimizing drag and maximizing speed. It automatically adjusts the airflow, bypass ratios and combustion temperatures based on mission parameters. The result? Unprecedented fuel economy combined with sustained Mach 2 Plus performance all while operating at altitudes near 65,000 feet. The EXA100 prototype, currently being tested by General Electric and the US Air Force, is the foundation of this technology. But the Navy's version tailored specifically for the FAXX will be even more refined. Smaller, lighter, more durable, optimized for carrier operations. Stealth and speed are vital, but avionics might be the true game changer. Modern integrated air defense systems, or IDS, have evolved beyond simple radar networks. Today's systems combine long-range VHF radars, infrared search and track sensors, electronic warfare suites, and AI-driven targeting algorithms into a single, coordinated web. These systems can now detect stealth aircraft at the F-20 and F-35 not because they're perfectly visible, but because their emissions, heat signatures, or subtle disturbances in the environment give them away. So the FAXX won't just rely on invisibility. It will rely on silence. It will carry an advanced infrared search and track system known as our ST that passively detects enemy aircraft and missiles by their heat signatures. No radar pulses, no signals emitted, just pure thermal observation. This allows the FAXX to remain completely silent and visible even to passive detection systems. Simultaneously, it will deploy powerful electronic attack capabilities, jamming pods capable of disrupting the enemy radar grids, deception systems that generate false targets, cyber-enabled countermeasures that confuse command and control nodes. All of this data, will be fused into a single, intuitive copy interface a sensory dashboard that presents the pilot with one unified picture of the battlefield. But the most revolutionary feature, the FAXX won't fly alone. It will lead a small fleet of autonomous drones up to four of them known as Collaborative Combat Aircraft, or CCA letters. They'll be intelligent, self-aware, AI-powered extensions of the fight itself. Imagine this scenario, the FAXX launches from a carrier to 1,000 kilometers from hostile territory. One drone flies ahead scanning for enemy radars, jamming installations and missile launch sites. Another trails behind, watching for inbound threats from the rear. Two more flank the main jet acting as decoys, drawing fire or even launching their own munitions to overwhelm defences. The pilot gives one command to execute penetration protocol. Then the drones go to work independently, autonomously without constant input. The pilot doesn't micromanage. The air handles coordination. The pilot focuses only on the primary objective. But here's the key. Human oversight remains. This isn't full autonomy. It's human in the loop decision making. The pilot retains final authority, but they don't have to babysit each drone. Together, the FAXX 
and this drone swarm form a miniature airborne armada. A single fighter becomes a force multiplier. A single pilot commands a squadron. A single mission achieves what once required dozens of aircraft. DARPA, Norfolk Grumman, Boeing, and Lockheed Martin are already testing prototypes. The Navy has committed billions. So where does the Air Force fit into all of this? You'd think they'd be leading. After all, they've dominated aerial warfare for the past 30 years. The F-20 to Raptor was theirs. The F-35 program was spearheaded by them. They announced the next generation air dominance program, NAED, as their answer to sixth generation warfare. They promised dominance. But here's the truth. NAD has stalled, repeated redesigners, shifting requirements. Major contractors like Norfolk Grumman have withdrawn. Boeing and Lockheed Martin are still involved, but they've warned the Pentagon, stop changing the rules. Funding is uncertain, deadlines are slipping. Meanwhile, the Navy's FAXX program moves forward steadily, confidently, without drama. And they've designed the FAXX not just for air superiority, but for multi-domain dominance. That's the difference. NAD is focused on winning dogfights. FAXX is designed to win wars. In short, the Navy isn't just building a better fighter, they're building the future of warfare. If successful, the FAXX won't just replace the F-35. Of course, success invites competition. China is developing its own 6th gen fight Haruma to be called to J-something. Russia is pushing its packed up bomber and Su-75 checkmate. Europe is collaborating on the FCAS and Tempest programs. Thanks for listening. This is a detailed analysis of the FAXX, the fighter that could change everything.